This is version 36 of the competitive Brawl Stars tier list. In the last update, we almost had 100 balance changes, so few things have changed. Thankfully, with the help of these pro players, we've been able to put together a competitive tier list that I think is pretty accurate. We're gonna start with the worst brawlers and work our way up to the best. And starting us off is Edgar, staying in the F tier. I don't know if Edgar has any hopes unless he happens to get a very good hypercharge. <laughs> they will maybe even make him average. I don't know. We'll have to see. For now, though, he's the worst brawler in the game. Close to him is Doug, staying in the F tier. Now, Doug actually received quite a few buffs to make it easier for him to land his super on fellow teammates to help keep them alive, but he's such a weak brawler overall because of his short range that uh, he's still not that great. Frank is also staying in the F tier. Not much has changed for him. He's still one of the easiest brawlers in the game to counter. Next, we've got the D tier brawlers. These ones are still not that great. Just not as bad as the F tier. First is BB staying in the D tier. Now, BB got a slight nerf to her vitamin booster gadget, and she's definitely one of the worst choices for tanky brawlers right now. Penny's moving from the C tier down into the D tier. She hasn't really changed much in the last few updates, but she's been gradually getting passed up by other brawlers who are stronger than her. So D tier for her now. Janet is staying in the D tier. No major changes for Janet. She's pretty much in the exact same spot as she was last update. Hank is staying in the D tier. Now, Hank is slightly better than before, but he's still very dependent on the map, and he's not nearly anywhere as good as a lot of the other tanks. Next up, we got the C tier brawlers. These brawlers are, aren't, like, awful. They're just not quite at the level for competitive play, though. Buzz is staying in the C tier. He's another close-range, tanky brawler that just has not been able to keep up with the new hypercharge meta. As you'll see in this video, a lot of the tanks are getting shoved down because certain tanks have actually gotten hypercharged that have made him somewhat viable. Ash is going from the B tier down to the C tier. And this kind of goes for Ash as well, right? You can either use a really strong tank with a hypercharge or you can use a different hypercharge brawler that does a really good job of countering tanks. Daryl's moving from the B tier down into the C tier. Now, Daryl can at least tank a decent amount of damage with his super, which makes him a safer tank than most options, but still worse than before. Sam is moving from the A tier down into the C tier. He didn't get any balance changes, but out of all of the tanks that have suffered from this meta, it's kind of hit Sam harder than the others. Chester is moving from the D tier up into the C tier. He's just a little bit better than before because he's a decent counter to some assassins, but he's certainly not going to be your best choice. Bo has moved from the B tier down into the C tier. Bo doesn't have any abilities to keep brawlers away from him, so he really struggles against certain tanks and assassins that are a little bit more prevalent than before. Gus has moved from the B tier down into the C tier. This is due to Gus's gadget losing its knockback effect, which was a pretty big nerf to it. He was already struggling a little bit, but this nerf put him just below average. Next up, we got the B tier brawlers. These ones can be competitive, especially on the right map or mode or to counter certain brawlers or to work with brawlers or whatever, but they're still not quite as well-rounded as the A tier and S tier brawlers. Mandy's moving from the A tier down into the B tier, and she's actually one of the few brawlers that didn't get any kind of balance change. So it seems like moving her down might not make sense, but because so many other brawlers did actually get buffs, she's actually slightly less viable than before. Meg is moving from the C tier up into the B tier, and Meg is actually doing surprisingly well against some of the top tier brawlers right now, but she's still pretty conditional. Leon is staying in the B tier. This meta really hasn't done very much to Leon. He might even be slightly worse than before, but same place as last time, pretty much. Dynamite is staying in the B tier. Now that more brawlers are getting speed boosts from their hypercharges, Dynamite is getting countered a lot more, so he's a little bit worse than before. Colt is staying in the B tier. Colt got a hypercharge in the previous update, and that helped him out a lot then, but not much has changed for him since then. Lola is staying in the B tier. Her stunt double gadget actually got a decent buff, but her other gadget's still better, so she's not really better or worse. Rico is staying in the B tier. Rico's super bouncy star power got a buff, but his bouncy castle gadget actually got a nerf. So I don't know. He's, he's about where he was before. Griff is also staying in the B tier. Some of the brawlers that Griff is good against actually got worse, and some of them actually got better. So Griff is kind of being used the same amount as before. El Primo is staying in the B tier. Even though a lot of tanks are actually dropping lower this tier list, El Primo's super is still really strong. So he's still actually a pretty decent option. Poco is staying in the B tier. A lot of Poco's abilities were rebalanced this update, but it hasn't made a big difference for him, so he's only slightly better than he was. Surge is moving from the C tier up into the B tier. Surge is actually a lot better in this meta, but he's still very conditional since he's pretty much useless when he gets outranged. Mortis is staying in the B tier. Mortis might be struggling a bit more against these hypercharged brawlers, but he's still a very good brawler against brawlers that, like, can't push him away or, like, throwers and stuff like that. Amber is staying in the B tier. The only major change that Amber received was a huge nerf to her Dancing Flames gadget, which wasn't even the good one, so she's still in the same spot as before. Grom is staying in the B tier. Very similar to Dynamite, Grom also struggles to hit brawlers with a speed boost, so hypercharges, which boost speed, are not really helping him out very much. Ems is staying in the B tier. She's still a decent counter to any tank, but she got, does get outranged easily, so she can only be used on certain maps. Max is staying in the B tier. There weren't any major changes to Max, but with more hypercharged brawlers being released, 
the more I'm thinking that Max's super might become like, I don't know, not as useful, or maybe it'll become really strong when she gets hers. I'm not sure which. Terra is moving from the A tier down into the B tier. All of Terra's shadows, whether her gadget or her star powers, all got nerfed pretty hard. So she's not quite as good as she was before. She's pretty much average now. Bonnie's moving from the A tier down into the B tier. Brawler pets are still decently strong in this meta, and Bonnie really struggles with them. She also can't assassinate a lot of the top brawlers very well right now because they've got a lot of HP, and she doesn't when she jumps on them. Jesse is staying in the B tier. Now, there were a lot of very opinions on Jessie from the pros. So honestly, I probably could have placed her a little bit higher. She might be in the A tier, all thanks to her hypercharge. That being said, her turret isn't really that much harder to deal with than normal, even when it's hypercharged. Tick is staying in the B tier. Tick's last for all gadget had its damage nerfed a little, but it hasn't really made that much of a difference since Tick's still being used just as much, and so is that gadget, honestly. Brock is staying in the B tier. Brock also got a damage nerf to his rocket laces gadget, but that gadget isn't really used for its damage anyway, so he's pretty much in the same spot as before. Mr. P is moving from the A tier down into the B tier. Mr. P and his porters were strong counters to a lot of the top brawlers last update, but that's not so much the case with the really strong brawlers right now. Otis is staying in the B tier. Just like most other tank counters, Otis is around the same place on this list as last time, even though he did get a slight nerf to his fast splatter gadget. Pearl is moving from the S tier down into the B tier. Pearl still probably has the worst hypercharge ability, and now that there are more hypercharge brawlers, she's being used a lot less. Also, she did receive some nerfs in the middle of last update, which have made her, uh, you know, just not quite the overpowered powerhouse that she was before. Kale is actually moving from the F tier all the way up into the B tier. One of the best ways to deal with these tanky hypercharged rollers is to just keep them away from you until their hypercharge runs out. And honestly, nobody does that better than Gale does. He's still not one of the best brawlers, but he is a good choice for countering them, at least. Crow is moving from the S tier down into the B tier. His <laughs> Gadget has been nerfed so many times that finally he is no longer a top brawler anymore. Both his slowing toxin gadget and his extra toxic star power are nowhere near as strong as they used to be. So Crow's starting to look like an average brawler. Carl's moving from the A tier down into the B tier. A lot of the top brawlers have abilities that can interrupt attacks, which makes Carl's super a lot less useful. So he's kind of hurting a little bit in this meta. Now we've got the A tier brawlers. These brawlers are typically useful in a lot of different situations. They're just not quite as OP as the S tier brawlers. 8-Bit is moving from the B tier up into the A tier. And 8-Bit's being used a lot more now because of how much damage he can actually deal with his boosted booster star power and because a lot of his counters aren't as good as they were, so they're being played less competitively. Ruffs is staying in the A tier. Ruffs just barely made it into the A tier. A lot of the strong brawlers right now can get past his sandbags, which is a reason why he has been strong in the past, but he's still a really solid option for supporting pretty much any of the top tier brawlers. Byron is staying in the A tier. And Byron isn't quite as strong as he once was, but there are still a few brawlers that he pairs really well with, and when he's paired up with those brawlers, especially the hypercharged tanks, he can be really overwhelming. Sprout is moving from the B tier up into the A tier. Sprout's super is a solid ability for keeping enemies away while their hypercharge is depleting. It's also a pretty good thrower as usual, so Sprout's honestly looking pretty in a good spot. Eve is moving from the B tier up into the A tier. She's actually seeing a, a, a decent amount more gameplay than before since there are actually some maps where hovering over some water can actually be a huge advantage. Advantage. Plus, her hatchlings are huge counters to brawlers that can't pierce through targets. B is staying in the A tier. Her Rydled Hive gadget got a small nerf, but it's actually still really strong, and B was already a solid brawler before the gadget was good. Belle is also staying in the A tier. She didn't have any major changes to her, but her range, along with her super, still make her a very well-rounded brawler. Willow is staying in the A tier, and she's actually a little bit stronger than she was before, because using her super on a hypercharged brawler not only wastes their hypercharge, but you can then use that against their team. Squeak is moving from the S tier down into the A tier. Just like Crow's gadget, Squeak's residue gadget actually finally got nerfed enough to the point where it's not completely game breaking. It's still really good though, and Squeak is still a good option. Nita is staying in the A tier. Nita was already a really good counter to close range brawlers, but she also got a huge buff to her Bear With Me star power, which has made her very difficult to kill. Sandy is staying in the A tier, and Sandy was one of those brawlers that was actually pretty good before this update, 
right? And then he got a huge damage buff to his rude sand star power, which a lot of people consider to be the better star power. So now he's even stronger than before. Gene is staying in the A tier. He received a small buff to his magic puff star power, and it was already one of the best star powers in the game. So Gene honestly is sitting in a pretty good spot right now. Barley is staying in the A tier, and Barley's probably the safest choice out of all of the throwers and certainly provides a lot more map control than the others, at least. Stu is moving from the B tier up into the A tier. Stu's Gasso Heal star power got buffed, and it was pretty much the only thing holding him back from being A tier, so this isn't really that much of a surprise. RT is staying in the A tier. RT is not only a great 1v1 brawler thanks to his hacks gadget, but his main attack also helps his teammates win their 1v1s as well. It's kind of funny because RT isn't really played for a super hardly at all, which is abnormal for most brawlers, and sometimes you can go an entire match without using it, but the bonus damage from his attack is just that good. Gray is staying in the A tier. He's a little better this update just because his super is so good with tanky brawlers that are hypercharged. I mean, if you've got a Rosa or a Jackie or a Bull that have their hypercharge ready, all paired up with Gray, like that's going to put the enemy in a world of hurt. Fang is moving from the S tier down into the A tier. He's really struggling against almost every brawler that has a hypercharge. But if you're playing against people that don't have hypercharges, he's probably still the strongest brawler in the game. Maisie is moving from the B tier up into the A tier. She honestly didn't get the best hypercharge ability, but the stat buffs from her hypercharge alone have made her a really strong brawler since she was already a pretty good option before she got her hypercharge. Cordelius is moving the B tier up into the A tier. And this is really just the fact that not only has a pretty good tank counter in the game, he can completely ruin the hypercharges because he just throws them into the shadow realm and then he can just escape because he's so fast in the shadow realm. Chuck is staying in the A tier. Now Chuck actually had not been released when I made the last tier list and he was easily the best brawler in the game once people did get a hold of him. Since then, he's been nerfed quite a few times and while he's still pretty broken in heist specifically, in fact, a lot of the pros call him the king of heist, the best of the best, you want to ban him every single time. He's not nearly as OP as he was and he's more about average in the other game, well, a slightly above average in the other game modes. Buster is staying in the A tier. Buster did receive a nerf to his attack damage, but it was pretty small and his slow-mo replay gadget and his super are still very useful abilities. Piper is moving from the S tier down into the A tier. She's another brawler that is honestly having a little bit of a harder time attacking brawlers that are hypercharged because they move so much faster, but she's still easily a high tier brawler and she even got a small buff to her ambush star power. Jackie is moving from the D tier all the way up into the A tier. I know I just lost the F tier. Don't worry, I'll get it later. I want to mention anything other than her hypercharge to justify why she's in the A tier now, but that's literally it. She's just a tank with a hypercharge that can actually cause some real issues in the competitive meta. Bull is moving from the C tier up into the A tier. And there were a lot of pros that actually listed him as the S tier. He might be an S tier brawler. He's actually really good. These tanks are just so hard to kill with their hypercharge that it all it actually does make up for the fact that they are pretty useless throughout the rest of the match. Next, we have the S tier brawlers, the best of the best, pretty much useful in any game, map, mode, or whatever situation you got. And kicking us off, we've got Pam moving from the B tier up into the S tier. This is due to the fact that her mama's hug star power doubled in healing. It's quickly made Pam and her teammates way harder to kill. Spike is moving from the A tier up into the S tier. Spike has always been a very good brawler and not only has his hypercharge made him even better, he plays particularly well against most of the other hypercharged brawlers. Rosa is moving from the B tier up into the S tier. She was actually above average when she started charging her super from like taking damage. And now that she has a hypercharge ability that works very well for her, she is a top tier brawler and can recycle her supers very easily. Shelly is staying in the S tier. She's still the ultimate tank counter and she can't even be outranged because of her clay pigeons gadget. And the fact that she could just counter an enemy to hypercharge with her own hypercharge just provides a lot of value. It's just so crazy that Shelly's one of the best brawlers in the game and has been for quite a few tier lists now when historically she has been one of the worst brawlers in the game, which is just funny. Nani is staying in the S tier. The only thing that changed for Nani since the last update was that her auto focus star power now does even more damage. So she's insanely strong. Finally, we have the top three, the best of the best in the meadow right now. And we're going to kick this off with Charlie in the S tier. Now this comes with a big fat disclaimer. When I asked the pros for feedback on the tier list, Charlie was by far the best brawler in the game. In fact, she should have had her own tier, the triple S tier, because she was so game-breakingly strong. Today, after I spoke to the pros, and while I'm recording this right now, she just got three nerfs, 
that makes her slightly less game-breakingly strong. So my placement for her might not be 100% accurate, but I think that she's still going to be a very strong brawler. The fact that she can keep enemies in a cocoon for seven seconds, even though it's not 10 seconds, that is still ridiculously strong because it pretty much turns the match into a 2v3 for those seven seconds. And when they come back, even though they might have more health than they did before they nerfed her star power, it's still going to be very easy to deal with those brawlers because the, your, you and your teammates have seven seconds to target them and get ready for them to break out of the cac their cocoon. Cocoon. I swear I can talk. There's a chance she still might be number one. There's a chance she might be A tier. But either way, Charlie is very strong. Next, though, we've got Colette moved from the B tier up into the S tier. And Colette's new hypercharge is dealing so much damage that not only is she significantly better in heist, like I maybe even better than Chuck. Like Chuck and Colette are the king and queen of heist right now. But even outside of heist, she's a highly competitive option in every mode. But the king of the meta is Lou, moving from the B tier up into the S tier. Lou doesn't have the best stats all around, but he pro he's received the best hypercharge by far. Like, it's insane. You can almost always charge a second super within the same hypercharge, and it's easy, too, because the opponents just get frozen instantly, and that recycling of his super gets out of hand very fast. And that is every brawler in the game ranked from worst to best. If you want to grab a screenshot, go ahead. Just don't crop my face out of it, and you can share it anywhere you like. Once again, a huge thank you to the pro players who helped put this tier list together. This was not my doing. I had zero say except for adjusting Charlie from the number one to number three spot. But other than that, this was all them. For real. Huge thank you to them. They deserve the credit just as much as I do, if not even more. Make sure you subscribe for future tier lists as the meta gets updated, and we'll see you in the next video.